Hello, hockey fans, and welcome to another edition of the Rain Report. Joey and Lindsay with you as the Ontario Rain back at home, although briefly as they continue on a season-high five-game road trip. And, Lindsay, let's dive into all the action from this past weekend. Three games in three days, pretty busy for Ontario, going through the Lone Star State in Cedar Park, Texas, and then on to San Antonio. But throughout those contests against the Stars and San Antonio Rampage, one thing really became prevalent, that Ontario was starting to find their stride and their identity playing Ontario Rain hockey. Sure, absolutely. I thought in the first game on Friday night, the game really got away from them. They lost 5-4, to four, kind of got into a special teams battle with Texas, a team that they don't want to do that against. Not a lot of positives coming out of that Friday night game, but Saturday, the rain really got back to their hockey. I mean, uh, I think that was the story, was just the way that over the weekend that they progressed. 2-1 uh, OT loss, kind of took two late penalties at the end of the third period, resulting in a 5-on-3. Jack Flynn really didn't have any chance on that goal by Stransky, but but um, admirable win on Sunday. I mean, the rain had to travel after that loss an hour to San Antonio, get on the bus, you know, do it all over again in an afternoon game on a quick turnaround. A really gutsy win. Uh, Flynn's first AHL win. And on the weekend, they take out three out of the six points, which, you know, not everything's lost in a tough three on three weekend. And they, they come back here home. The rain went 1-1-1 one, one, and one over that three-game and three-day weekend and now gets set to go back out on the road. They'll take on the Tucson Roadrunners in Tucson, Arizona this upcoming weekend. But, Lindsay, to kind of go back on those points, especially on Sunday, they didn't act like a team that was playing their third game in basically two and a half days with that afternoon matchup. And head coach Mike Southers mentioned that you could see it on the faces of the guys. They were starting to have fun, and they were starting to click in terms like they were figuring out their system styles, where they belong, what they need to do to accomplish and grab two points. Sure, and part of that has to do with the rain, just kind of having a young team right now, um, guys kind of getting back into the rhythm. And so I thought on Sunday that, you know, they were able to really grind their way out against the Rampage. I mean, it faced adversity in the third period, um, another, you know, five on three situation. Uh, they could have just, you know, gave up from there and, and, and went home. But um, power play again, a really big story. Sean Backman with a great goal there. And uh, then they get the empty netter and come home with at least one win off the weekend. And the power play continuing to make noise and improve for the Ontario Reign. They've now scored at least one power play goal in each of their first six games this season. 44% in the American Hockey League, which is number one in the AHL. What about this power play continues to shine bright? Because even though if they face adversity or they hit a, a couple row bumps in the beginning of the contest, they're able to settle down and grab goals. Right. Well, Justin Auger had two power play goals on Saturday night. A big body in front um, kind of gets to those dirty areas. And then, uh, oh, that was Friday night, I'm sorry. And then Kempe on on Saturday gets a power play goal himself and then just like we just discussed I mean Sean Backman converting on the power play so those are big goals for the team to help them kind of come along here early in the season. And to reflect on how well they did last year compared to where they are now, the Reign with 11 power play goals so far this season, 11 for 25 again number one in the American Hockey League. Last year took them 14 games to get to 11 power play tallies but now Lindsay I mean moving forward it's the penalty kill too that's also uh, given up a couple of chances as well last year took them 15 games to give up eight power play goals against they've done so here in the first six what needs to change up a little bit on the PK sure well I think you know overall the rain maybe like their stats don't look so great on the penalty kill but I was really impressed with the way that they buckled down especially in those last two games in Texas they were the reign of old, I thought, on the penalty kill. I mean, that was really the story last year. The story this year seems to be the power play. But, I mean, two goals on 16 chances uh, uh, surrendered, basically, in those last two games. So that was a positive thing coming back here at home. Now for the Ontario Reign, once again, the news off the ice. Also grabbing some headlines. Dusty Emu, the LA Kings development goaltending coach, having to step in on a PTO as his son Jonah played in that Saturday contest against the Stars, would be taken out early in the third pier with a lower body injury and then Jack Flynn would step in and then eventually go back in on Sunday to grab the win against San Antonio but what can you tell us about the goaltending woes for Ontario as well as for the Kings it just seems like every week something's going on with the men in between the pipes. Yeah I think the big thing was that Stuthers said the nightmare just continues I mean Jonah Emu going down in that loss I mean he apparently was injured a lower body injury in the first period tried to tough it out he couldn't Jack Flynn has to come in and kind of in tough circumstances gives up that overtime goal but Jack Flynn looked uh, very good in his his victory on Sunday his first AHL win and fortunately for the rain I mean they brought Dusty's gear so he was able to kind of come in and play that backup role but he didn't have to actually get in the game. 
And then last week, the rain also added goaltender Anders Limbach to a PTO. He is now up with the Kings. Skating with them cannot play just yet, but what can you tell us about that? Because certainly if the rain can get him and he's available to play, that'll be a huge help here coming down the stretch. Right. Well, he was brought in about this time last week, um, and at that time they were told, you know, seven to ten days to kind of get that visa paperwork done. So if all goes according to plan, we're kind of waiting to hear. Could be an option possibly this weekend, but in the meantime, Jack Flynn's on the ice today, and the rain have brought back. Uh, Troy Redmond kind of as a practice goalie for now. The rain also suffering injuries up front. We would discover before Sunday's game against San Antonio for Brett Sutter not available to practice or play in that contest. And again, an upper body injury for him. But what can you tell us about Brett? The rain just on the ice now. So kind of everything being still talked about and learned about from this organization, but Brett not here at practice today. Yeah, it's a big loss for the rain, to be honest. Uh, Brett's not out here practicing today. An upper body injury for him was going to be reevaluated this week. But I think the big thing was that line of uh, Brett Sutter, Johnny Brodzinski, and Adrian Kempe was a very good line, at least on Saturday night. And then things kind of get mixed up. You put Justin Auger with those guys instead, move Kempe back to center. So um, if he cannot travel this weekend, uh, Patrick Bjorkstrand's kind of that option. But um, he's a big loss for the rain because he is a veteran presence, a guy who knows how to play the right way. And now for Ontario, they're getting set for two games against the Tucson Roadrunners out in Tucson, Arizona, the newest team to join the Pacific Division as well as the American Hockey League overall. But it's an untested team for Ontario. They really haven't seen anything from them this season. The first of 12 scheduled, that is a season high, tying them with San Diego in terms of the head-to-head -head matchups. But, Lindsay, what can you tell us about the new Tucson Roadrunners? Well, Kyle Wood was just recently named uh, AHL Player of the Month. Um, he's a third year, or I'm sorry, third round pick by the Avs. Um, so he's uh, been leading them in scoring so far. And Chris Mueller is another forward, a familiar name to Rain fans um, with San Diego last year. Um, a, a player that was really a tough one to play against uh, for San Diego. The Rain and Tucson Roadrunners getting together again on Friday and Saturday, the first meetings of the season between the two teams. And certainly it's going to be a fun one out at Tucson Arena in Tucson, Arizona. You can catch all the action on Rain Radio and OntarioRain.com. Lindsay, thanks for joining us for another edition of the Rain Report. Thanks for having me, Joey.